For quite some time now I've wanted a function generator and I found this one on Amazon for £6.99 and I bought it in November. It's now February and I've just gone and built it. Hello and welcome to Gav Tries to Build. Today I'm building a function generator which I got from a kit. Uh, I, what I thought I'd do is do like a voiceover because it annoys me when I'm soldering. I can't have my podcast on. Anyway, so what I've done here is I've got the components list in the top right and I've got my uh, little PCB holder holding the printed circuit board and I've laid out my components on my mat. I've got my little tester there and I'm just starting to tack things in. Um, I'm just working down the list top to bottom. Nice and easy. So I'm using leaded solder here which just flows better. Uh, I want to try to learn to use the tin based stuff but it's very difficult for rework, it's very difficult to get apart, it doesn't flow as well. So the blue box to the left of my mat is a fume extractor box, it's just the cheapest one you can get on Amazon. And to the left of that out of shot I've got a big Bosch air purifier and to the right I've got a little USB fan which blows most of the fumes towards the uh, things that are meant to deal with them. Uh, I've got a room with a high ceiling, so I try not to inhale as much of this stuff as I can, but uh, what are you going to do? None of us going to live forever, we're already full of plastics, aren't we? Um, so I've got that little component tester box that pops out every so often. I'm using that an ounce of shot. I've got my multimeter. I do double check the component values all the time. You can see there I've highlighted a couple of components that I can't get to at the moment because of where the PCB holder is sat. Uh, with these potentiometers, I'm just tacking them on without that much solder um, which turned out to be a good idea because ideally I should have moved them at the end although I didn't I just sort of boshed it in um, but yeah if you flow too much solder into there very difficult to get out that little uh, component tester kit that's awesome although I put a lit capacitor into one of those the other day a capacitor had some charge in and nuked it so that's my second one I'm going to be more careful I don't think my capacitor drainer works uh, I don't really know how to verify that, but the, the light never comes on, no matter how fat a capacitor with how much charge I put into it. Uh, so I think it's knackered. I don't think it ever worked. Still. So putting the capacitors on here, what I used to do when I soldered capacitors on, I'd use crop clips as heat sinks. Um, that was all the, always the advice when building effects pedals, of which I built about mm, 15 or so. But I don't really bother anymore. I just sort of solder them in. I've done so much work on consoles recently and I've never felt that I've needed to uh, heat sink the legs of capacitors doing that. I, I don't know. So these these caps are the uh, bi-directional, whatever you call it. They're, they're, they're not got a polarity. I'm using a bit of blue tack. It's actually white blue tack, which is incredibly confusing to hold components in place as a solder. Uh, the soldering station I've got, it's not a super expensive one, it is a light tool one and I really like it now. Um, I have problems with the tips though because they're supposed to be a certain size and every time I order replacements they're not quite the right size and they either slide off or they uh, they get stuck and they're really, really difficult to get off. So as a result I don't often change change the tip to a different size, I'm just using like a, a standard sort of pen style tip here not a chisel or a hook or anything like that I quite like the hooks for fine work um, getting in there if I'm trying to desolder a chip I've had a lot of success with master systems this week I desoldered some chips off a master system and uh, managed to socket them and remove the equivalent chips from another master system and plop them in and verify that the problem wasn't with those chips after all it's with the great big chips got 64 jaggedy legs on it so I don't think I'll be swapping that um, but the the way I've done it, getting them off, is using chip quick. It's really low melt solder and blending it with the solder that's already in there. My moving solder sucker gun is trash. Like it, it sort of removes some of the solder and it's still sat there looking at you. And uh, solder wick I find is good for cleaning holes, but actually removing components, well, you can do it. But it sucks. And the uh, the manual pumps, well, they're either too aggressive or they don't shift anything. So getting that chip quick on there. Heating it, board the board up with my hot air gun, and I was able to just to push the chips out. I mean, you do you are risking thermal damage there, but um, yeah, it's been good. So yeah, here I've got it assembled, and I've stupidly put all the pots on. I put all the knobs on. I haven't realised yet at this point I am going to need to push those uh, knobs through the holes. Um, oh well. And here I'm laying out the screws. Uh, I couldn't get the little screws on there. It took me absolutely ages of trying to 
hack through the back legs of some of these pins. Those pins have got really long legs. Um, they're really tough as well. It took me some getting through. I couldn't do it with the side snips. I had to use my little yellow snippers um, to try to get it flat so it would actually sit in the casing that's provided. So this casing comes with all this horrible brown tape, like you can see it all over my work board. And there, I'm trying to get this. This, this took me almost as long as the soldering it felt like to try to get this this casing together uh yeah i didn't really think it through but um it all sort of slots together and here I've, is where i've realized the problem and here i decide to clean the board as well a little bit of isopropyl alcohol um i didn't solder with flux i didn't really see the point uh i wasn't doing any rework it wasn't very fine work it was just like soldering it soldering in a bit of lead solder it's going to go in no problem it's got flux in it uh, I do use flux if I'm desoldering things like um, that little power uh, three pin adapter on the side. See, I'm reworking that there, so I've got a bit of brass wire around, a uh, copper wire around it to transfer heat into it, so I could push it through. But um, and eventually, yeah, I did manage to get it flat to the board because I soldered it in on an angle so that the the the, the, um, the lid wasn't landing. So this is me faffing about for flipping ages. What a Norbert. Um, but yeah, I finally get this together. Yep, there we go. There's my second attempt at the moving solder sucker. You can see I've got my safety goggles on my head because that, uh, all the bits of leg pinging off when I was trying to hack through those really tough legs. Made out of the same thing as Wolverine's claws, I think. It's not cool to talk about comic books anymore, is it? It's like a normie thing now. It's, it's even gone beyond that. It's just cringe now. Um, anyway, this is all, all coming together. Those longer screws, they uh, they hold the top and the bottom together. So I haven't screwed the base to the the base to the PCB. I can see the point in the end. So there we go. That's all set up. I've now built this function test. So I've got it on test. And what you have is uh, three controls and a couple of outputs. So I've got the ground just into the side of the probe, into the dead end of the probe. If I go into sign here. Uh, I've kind of got it sort of a triangle, there's a little jumper I can put in which should get it to a, a sine wave, hold on I've missed, there we go, I mean it's not like a perfect sine wave but it's good enough, and if I were to give it more amplitude, notice the clipping, the, the top and the bottom will clip, so it's no longer a sine wave, so there it is, there's a sine, push it, it's flattening top and bottom, it's not an even, completely even duty cycle according to this, 45 year old <laughs> oscilloscope. Thanks, Uncle Kid. He gave me this. Take that out. That's now a triangle wave. I've got to pull back the amplitude again. Uh, and where am I at the moment? I'm in the 85k to 1 megahertz range. So let's push it up as fast as it'll go. See if I'm. Yeah, I can catch that on here. Oh, it didn't want that. There we go. Come on, stabilize. So it's a completely analog meter, you see. It's, uh, it's older than I am, but only just. Um, and let's have a look at the square wave. So that's probably got too much amplitude on it. I don't look like a square wave at all, does it? Let's um, take it back. There we go. So there we go. It's a square wave. You can see the high and the low pretty, pretty evenly there. That's a square wave. Ain't nobody telling me that's not a square wave. The um, amplitude does nothing on the on the square wave. And no matter what I do with with the other jumper, nothing happens either, which is which is fine. It's what I wanted. So that square wave, I can adjust the frequency. Uh, I can take it down to here, and then I would need to there we go. Speed it up so it shows on the monitor. Lovely. Ah, there's a pretty nice square wave actually, nothing wrong with that. Lower it down. There we go, getting a very, very nice, clear, steppy, steppy wave there. So at the moment I've got this set on 3.5k. 65 hertz. If I use my frequency tester, let's have a look what frequencies are at. Just jack in here on ground and square. 
23.46 kilohertz if I speed it up. Eighty kilohertz. See how fast it goes without that in. Okay, so that's four point one megahertz. One point three one megahertz. Let's put a jumper in on the fastest. It should cap out about one megahertz. There we go. One point two megahertz, and let's cap it about ten hertz. Almost nothing because uh, yeah, just about it just about registers on my multimeter. So that's as slow as it's going to go. Let's see if we can find it this slow. Yeah, okay, just sort of that's all. Yeah, it's phasing, isn't it? I can actually catch it. Can <laughs> you see it's so slow there? Phosphor going, it's fun, isn't it? Yeah, it's so slow, I'm struggling to detect it. Okay, let's go. Okay. The square definitely behaves nicer with these pins in. Get rid of it. There we go. Cool. Yeah, a little function generator. Happy with that. Powers it off a nine volt battery. Really cool. Really, really cool. Nice little thing.